It's some waste. Freud told me no more cell phones are allowed yeah. on the show. Uh, Only gummy bears. Yeah, I, f I feel very uh, um, offended that you would don't think I give you your undivided, my undivided attention. No, I just need more than that. <laughs> so needy. You are, are you caught so up on uh, Bochetti and all those guys? Uh, through, what's today, Tuesday? Uh, I have not listened to Monday yet. I just got through Friday. Friday was pretty funny. The second hour when they were messing with Bochetti. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, I love how they play that Zen music, and he just gets so outraged. No, it's the, it's the sad music. It's the woe is me cartoon music from, like, the 1950s. <laughs> Remember, like, the black and white uh, Bugs Bunny shit when something oh. went wrong? Then they had to play, like, a sob story, and he would, like, dress up like a girl and, like, tell the sob. You know, remember that? Yeah, no. It, to me, it sounds like a somber garden that, uh, yeah. you know, that, that like, so, that uh, you go in after a great loss when you're in an eastern country. Oh, Jesus. But Welcome to Functional Meatheads. Everybody. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to Functional Meatheads. I am Mark DeSalvo. And I'm Froilan Sanchez. And thanks for uh, choosing to listen to us yet another week. And that's uh, a cold open, right? Isn't that a cold open? Yes. Well, uh, a cold open, I guess, would tell you more about the story, but I guess it is a cold open, <laughs> usually. But if this is your first podcast, what we are all about is discussing things that make us better trainers and casually talk about scientific articles, training, Whatever. Gym goers, our musings of the gym. Musings of the gym and just life in general. Because I think that's the, the ultimately the healthiest expression of yourself is when you just allow yourself to kind of just free flow. Yeah, or we could just do gym guys. Like, yeah, do you ever listen to Jim Rome? He's got a whole it's like oh, yeah. a gym guy. He's got a gym guy that comes into the show? No, like it's like a gym guy number 15, the guy that's like yelling at the weights and stuff. <laughs> He has a whole series that he did, that guy at the gym. Like, it was pretty funny. I'm sure there's a bunch of websites that are similar to it, but it was pretty good. It was uh, one of his best stuff. But I, I didn't know, I didn't realize he had writers for a long time, and then they, somebody said it, and I was like, what? Well, I mean, you can't do it all alone. I know, but, it, I mean, he's, his, his wit is pretty much just put down whatever you have to put. It's not like it's rocket science to do sports, you know? Right. I will say, though, that... I think when he got popular that a lot of people tried to copycat him and they just weren't good at it because they were just trying to be mean or maybe they were mean or producers gave like these real jerk-offs um, sports talk shows. Yeah. I think there was something honest about Jim Rome. Like he kind of did everything in earnest. So yeah. you know, even if you weren't a jerk, he was enjoyable. Like I always have liked him a lot. I, I, I mean he kind of is everything I'm not as a person and things traits I don't necessarily like in people wow. but... But I love him. I like him a lot. I love listening to his show. I used to watch his show. I'm a big fan of his. Did you ever call in? I called into his radio show one time. Really? And he talked to you? Yeah, it was when Shanahan took over for... Um, what was Shanahan's second job? Uh, the Raiders? I think that was it. Yeah, before the Broncos? Yeah, oh, just five seconds. Like, hey, what do you think? How is he going to do? And that's it. <laughs> Oh, so he didn't. He just cut you off right after you asked him how yeah, you thought you were. Yeah, basically using. asked the question and then they cut you off. And there's about a 20 second delay, so you can kind of hear yourself talking. But it was yeah. pretty interesting. I mean, just to see, I was I was pretty stoked that I got in. It was I remember it was a college day, like a Wednesday, and I was bored. And my friend's like, "You can't get on." I'm like, "I'll call right now." <laughs> you can't get on, man. Jim Rohn don't want to talk to you. It's lame. It's all luck of the draw. And if they like your question. Right, exactly. It's like the producers kind of use the callers to push their agenda of what they where they want the conversation to go. Yeah, I mean, I wish we could take phone calls. That'd, that'd be awesome. We got to figure that out soon. We can. Yeah. Um, I, th I because we use Google Hangouts. I think there is there's got to be a way people can try to page into us. Like we can give them there's a number. A phone or something. thing on the top of the. Are you looking at the top of the screen? It has like a phone thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's to leave the call. <laughs> that's like for me to get out of this chat. 
But if we were to interview people, which we are going to do soon, yeah. the way they will. I will essentially invite them into a, like a chat room like this. So it'll be three way, four way, however many people you want in here at once. Age, sex, and location, bro. ASL. Yep. But you know, we always kind of kick off the show talking about projects and our personal projects, mm -hmm. and I wanted to kind of give everyone else a project to work on because I think it's something everyone can do yeah. and will help. Has a lot of benefit and value f for people, I think. Cool. Uh, what I th I'm going to work backwards here. I'm not burying the lead here. When I leave jujitsu class, and when I was kind of in yoga at the height of of going to yoga classes regularly, like attending with a teacher and instructor. But right now for me it's jujitsu. When I leave there, the truth is revealed to me when I walk out. And that sounds very dramatic. But in other words, I was in this deep meditative type of state for an hour. You wouldn't think of jujitsu as meditative, but like you have to really concentrate in order to execute whatever you're doing. And make sure you don't hurt yourself or hurt someone else. Uh, it's like a really complex dancing almost. <laughs> And, you know, when you leave that environment, usually it's the moment I walk out of the door, mm -hmm. you kind of feel, uh, you know, the world starts to creep back into your head. Like, you, there's, there's a couple seconds, a minute or two maybe, where your brain is completely clear and you sort of feel a little bliss. And I think a lot of it, I mean, obviously there's a cortisol dump involved, there's a lot of biological processes happening, mm -hmm. but there's a moment where... It's, everything's clear, and it's just calm, and then the truth of, of how you were thinking about something or whatever your problem was before you entered that class, mm -hmm. it, it sort of reveals itself as like, oh, you were worrying over nothing. That's a bunch of bullshit, or whatever it is. Like, if some, problems at work, what's that? Do you think it's, maybe I'm generalizing, do you think there's two things I'm thinking, and maybe it's none of them. Is it the, the absolute mindfulness that you had just recently had, or is it more of uh, the Jim Jones, un you were able to unfuck your head for an hour, so then you gain perspective? It could be a little bit of both. Okay. It could be a little bit of both, um, but I've just noticed now, doing this for six weeks or whatever it's been, that I feel this really uh, huge sense of of like the the truth is revealed to me and i think that there's activities in life that make you kind of think about things really clearly and to say the truth is revealed to you is a dramatic way of saying yeah you sound like you're a bummer yeah yeah so, yeah yeah <laughs> no like uh the the truth of the also situation we, we will reveal the truth to you <laughs> yes we will reveal the truth to you we are woo peddlers um, <laughs> No, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's it's in other words, it's that moment of clarity. You can think absolutely clear about something you were previously unable to think clearly about. Nice. And 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 I get that now. And I think that there is, I think that's important to have those those releases, those moments. And I I kind of challenge everyone and make it a project and write in and tell us about it. About like what is your activity that kind of clears your head and because you need it whether it's going for a walk, whether it's um, getting away from people for an hour, or what, you know, going to yoga, going to jujitsu, going to the gym. Uh, it can be really simple. Just going in, if you, you know, live with a spouse and have a kid or something, it's just going into a room and reading by yourself for 30 minutes with a low light or something. Yeah. Any, anything. Uh, How much time do you commit to yourself sometimes, too, you know? Right, and that's that's the most simple way of putting it. And I, 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 I have found tremendous benefit with that. Like, I didn't notice... When I stopped going to yoga regularly, I didn't notice how that was kind of missing from my life so much. And uh, when I did yoga nidra regularly... I, I, I do yoga nidra regularly, but it's not as regimented as it used to be. When I was in the height of yoga nidra, it was three times a week at this time all the time. Now I generally get it in once or twice a week um, but I've committed to doing it, so it's not like I have it scheduled, whereas I used to. But that there's something about the scheduling of it, for me at least, of those activities that kind of induce that state of clarity. That's just, once you have it back, you're like, wow, how did I ever get by without it? That's such a good feeling, you know? I've, uh, I've lost the meditation for a bit. This, this winter, this extended winter, like the last two weeks, I would say the last three weeks, 
have thrown me off in terms of meditating. I can't, I can't get back into it in a way. Yeah. It's almost like my body's just like, no, dude. I need, I need the winter. I need spring. I need sunlight. I need to go run. I need, like, it's come, Everything's coming to a head. Like, I could feel it building, and I almost want to get back into it. But I, and I know what it does, and I know exactly the feeling that you're talking about. Where, like, as soon as I do it again, I'm gonna be like, oh, what? Why didn't I stop doing it? You know, why did I stop? Why didn't I continue? So, right. I know it's one of those things that that we can get into there. But see, your thing's pretty interesting because what you were talking about is. Usually for me it's running, but I'm thinking about the problem. Like I'll go for five, six miles, and I'll be like, if I, whether I'm thinking about a story, fiction, short story, movie, whatever, uh -huh. I'll work it out by the time I'm done, the whole process. But yours mm -hmm. is actually thinking of something different, concentrating purely on something, and then releasing that, and then you gain perspective on something else, right? Exactly. Precisely. Interesting. I've, I've, I have yet to do that. I need to think about that. Because you're, I guess you are getting perspective. You're just basically approaching the problem again, or or musing, whatever, from a different angle with a little bit of different perspective. And maybe the body, the body mind connection, is shocking you back to reality, saying, you know, oh, I can't afford those Nike sweatpants, or I can't afford to pay my rent. They're both real problems, right? Mm -hmm. But. Perspective comes into play when your body te your body tells your mind, "Hey, you're freaking healthy. You don't your heart is everything's good. Nothing's wrong with your body. You have the most important. I mean, obviously I'm generalizing, right? But you have the most important thing right now. You have your health. You can always make more money. You can always you know buy some sweats, whatever you know, something trivial. Um, maybe it's a perspective thing where you're like, I just did something with my body. You're not saying this to yourself exactly, but your body knows that you just did something strenuous and grueling and, and you achieved something physically that you couldn't do unless you have this modicum of, of, of health. So maybe that's your body's way of talking to your mind and saying, look, any of the problems you got here are, are not problems or shift the perspective somehow. Right. I think that we that's... About, we always talk about the mind-body connection, but we never talk about the body-mind connection. And I know I'm, I'm picking, you know, I'm nitpicking here, but it's true. Yeah. You know, if your body, I, I haven't worked, I worked out, but I've, I've been, I haven't hitting, been hitting it really hard. I've been trying other things, and I hit it really hard. I hit it really, I know exactly. I hit it really hard today, and I was, my body was like singing after the workout. Like I was like, I feel really good. I feel like my body's humming. I'm good to go. Um, you know, just to the point, I pushed it just enough. I didn't push it too hard, but right where the precipice was, I managed the pain. You know, it was a very interesting uh, conversation I was having with myself, you know, as I was changing back into my training clothes because I was like, I feel good. I'm ready to train all day. You know, let's do it, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting uh, perspective. Right. Yeah, I think you kind of nailed it 100%, but I, th I, I think the one thing I'll add to it as well is that my own kind of goal that I I don't know if this is is big for everyone, but it's what speaks to me most when you talk about meditation, yoga, uh, Eastern spirituality, or anything at all. Is just that is achieving like a meditative state or using meditation to kind of quiet your brain. And uh, there's something about just the act of meditation that. Uh, I only seem to be able to really achieve it in places where I can go outside or be outside and it's warm and it's nice and I'm kind of in nature and yeah. and I can just close my eyes and concentrate only on my breathing and when I concentrate so much on my breathing my mind approaches that blankness that I think you're trying to achieve in meditation and it's it, it's really hard to get there and I think that's why meditation isn't more common in our culture and our uh, our you know, kind of popular conscious consciousness and oh uh, good and I think the jujitsu I have to concentrate so much just to execute the move that mm -hmm. I can't think about anything else and it's analogous to that it's analogous to the emptying of the mind that I'm concentrating so hard on this one thing that there's there's no distractions that when I meditate, you know, it's like you suddenly you feel the floor under you. You think about, ah, I forgot to take out the trash. I sort of smell it a little, or 
I forgot to, I, I didn't clean, I didn't vacuum last weekend. It feels a little, you know, all these things pop in your head or, you know, you need to go grocery shopping. And all these things just distract from what you are actually trying to accomplish. And in jujitsu, it's almost like a way I condition myself to meditate. Like I work out, I found, I have, I found a new inspiration and, and, uh, and, meaning in working out now because it prepares me for jujitsu. Like I've completely restructured my workouts to to help me address where I'm weak in jujitsu or where where I can excel. And You're working on your hips all day long. Yeah, exactly. So well and there's there's a lot of things, you know, off your back. Like you know, you're in the guard and your back is perfectly supported by the ground. So there's a lot of bench press type movements that are actually very uh um, can't do hip escape, bro, you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> those kettlebells, man, and deadlifts. Uh, all yeah. jujitsu guys, all they do is work kettlebells when they're not working body stuff. Yeah, and a lot of videos on that. Yeah, it's amazing, and it's uh, it's it's really cool. And you know, also too, when you talk about guys like Crone Gracie and a lot of the higher level guys, they're really big into breathing, and I well, like that. Hickson was into breathing and meditation. Yeah. And I, even like uh, the school, the academy I go to, you know, the the, the head of it, Marcel Garcia, he's very um, he's very big into his teachers always preach staying calm, staying comfortable. You, you know? can manage your breathing. You can manage it. That's like the Buteco method. They tell you to teach the breathing for anxiety, and it's yeah. Your mind might be well. What is meditation? What's yoga nidra? You're chilling on the floor with a mat, preferably everything mm -hmm. all cool. And then I, tell, I try to teach people, yes, when you sit down, the first time you do it, you're going to be like, I have to make lunch tomorrow. I forgot to take out the trash. What's that smell? What's that noise? Then you're going to be like, Jesus Christ, this is my mind when it tries to relax. It's all these stupid. You're going to start noticing the quality of the thoughts that you're having when right. you try to sit and do meditate. You're like, Jesus, I'm, a, I'm like a 12-year-old girl in my head in high school. Like I'm worrying about this, 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 this. It's ridiculous. Um, so then start off there with the quality of what, what am I thinking about? Oh, my God, I'm thinking about the stupidest stuff in the world. And the Biology Belief Guy a, a book, he talks about, like, you only have so many, you, ha you only have so much ability physically to do something all day long. Why would you think that your mind is different than that? Your mind is basically your brain is, is a piece of flesh, right? Mm -hmm. And it has its function. It doesn't have above and beyond its function, it has its function, you know, so why, why do you, like a marathoner, you could go run a certain amount of miles, but you can only run a certain amount of miles that your body's conditioned to run, right? right. So why would you think your mind can run five marathons? Why would you think that? You know, it's impossible. You have only so much energy and so much thought to give, right. so it's pretty interesting when you, when you learn to try to, you start to control the mind. I was just reading about this book on Amazon called 10% Happier about this guy who decided stop being depressed and, and be happier. And the two main things, at least as far as I can tell just from the description and, and from the reviews are meditation and mindfulness. And it's so weird that people, like mindfulness is such an odd concept for everybody to handle that it blows my mind. You know, we want to be in our iPhones. We want to be, you know, thinking about every single thing that comes up. But, you know, just sit and do the dishes one day it just const doesn't have to be jujitsu. It doesn't have to be running ten miles. Sit and do the dishes, and that's and make sure it's the most important dishes. Like you clean everything. You sit. You have not. You're you're gonna dedicate a certain amount of time to just doing the dishes, and even that should have its effect on you. Yeah, taking um, pride in things you do. Yeah, it's just mindfulness. Like, like you know, you talk about the the ashrams or the monasteries with all these Buddhists. They make them just sweep the floor, and then they don't. They're just like. They're not like, I don't want to sweep the floor. They're like, you know what, I'm going to sweep the floor and I'm going to be mindful. I'm sure you've done it with a couple clients where you're, I'm just going to give this person 100% of my attention, every little detail, every little thing. I'm going to figure it all out from here, you know? Yes. Yes, every single one. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it's fascinating. When you do that, you can, you can see a lot of things. The better... The better the trainer you are, the more mindfulness that you can bring as a trainer or as a person working out at the gym, the more you're going to discover about yourself, either as a trainer, like, oh, I need to learn this because my client's back is doing this and I don't know what it means, or you're going to realize that your workouts suck. 
or they're, they're, what am I really doing? Am I challenging myself or am I just maintaining something that's not, you know, I just, I'm in a routine. I, I tw 10 minutes on the cardio, so I hit the, these five machines, and then I think about my day as I do that. Like, start thinking, just treat it. Like, I get on the mat and I start doing my meditation, I start thinking the quality of the thoughts that I'm doing. Mark, again, I'm challenging you, just like Mark challenged you. It's like, go to your, do your workout and start thinking, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about the workout or are you thinking about everything that happened during the day? Why are you thinking about everything that happened during the day? Is this the right place for this to happen? Possibly is. But if it's happening Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on your only three trips to the gym, then you're not really using the body what it's meant to be. You're not really taking advantage of movement for your body. You're just... It's basically becoming a therapy, which is fine, but not every single time you work out. Your right. body needs one day where it sings, like Mark just said. He, he goes into his workouts and he's not thinking about it. He's, he's thinking solely about that. And because he's doing that, he's gaining more perspective on other things. So if you're going to the gym and you're like, I'm going to work out really hard. This, girl, this guy yelled at me. This customer was giving me crap. You know, that's fine and dandy, but you're never going to go above and beyond those problems if you don't get perspective on them. You're just going right. to be uh, spin a wheel. All right, start the wheel every day, running up the wheel, up the wheel. You're never going to go, wow, maybe I need a bigger wheel, or maybe I'm tired of being on this wheel. You know, because all your systems are going to be firing if you do. So something to, to kind of keep in mind as a project. Absolutely. You know, kind of to get like all uh, gym nerd tweak head on, on you here and get into the, uh, the exercise as aspect of this, it's something you said just struck me that uh, if you're going to the gym and you're in a routine you're in, and it's not a mindful routine or there's not a reason you're doing it or you're I doing it for... people, they go 20 minutes on the treadmill. Right, exactly. The first thing they do, I can t first thing they do is they sit on the tricep machine at the gym. That's the all we, every day for the last two years I've seen the same people 20 minutes on travel, tricep machine, first exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well the reason, the thing I was going to say is that you know this might require a little means on your part but maybe maybe not. That if you're going to the gym and you're and, and that describes you and there's nothing wrong with that, we're not judging you but what I will say is that I sort of think gyms, like global gyms, big box gyms, gyms as oh. we know them, they're not able to, they, they're not conducive to, in some ways, to what Freud and I are talking about. Like, it's working against you. Like, you can go to those gyms and be mindful and, and do workouts that are meaningful. I mean, I do, but I also, you get really accustomed to the surroundings. And you're often not with an instructor unless you're in a class or you're in a with a trainer. So you go to what's comfortable. You do your 20 minutes. You go on the tricep machine. You go on the chest press machine, leg press, uh, and that's your day. And then you come back and you're like, well, I got more of an arms day, arms abs, you know. <laughs> and you start yeah. doing routines, and you're not mindful. And then you're thinking about things outside the gym. There's something that's like to me. And this is an idea I kind of wanted to explore with some time. I spend a few minutes on. It doesn't seem like the big box gyms are conducive. You have to work that much harder to make sure you don't fall into that. Well, I, I'm going to add to you because this is a thought I've always had. Big box gyms suck. They're yeah. they're not meant to meet your needs. They're not meant to make you healthy. They're not meant to get you to your goals. They're meant to make you come back every day, every day, every day, and be a member for years upon years upon years upon years. It's right. the same thing as Clubs. McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's is not there to make you healthy. McDonald's is not there to give you the best foods. McDonald's is there to make a profit. Those right. gyms are there to make a profit. They subscribe to a model that in and of itself can put a prison around your head. So let's just start off with the treadmills. And this is adding on to what you said, treadmills. They all count calories. They all they have all this digital data and numbers and everything else. But in the whole theory, nobody ever realizes, hey, you're not really running. Right. You're running a treadmill. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm injured, but I can run on I can't run outside, but I can run on a treadmill. How does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> How does that make sense to anybody and anything? Anyways, that's number one. That's just a couple of things. 
Um, elliptical, same deal. I mean, unless you do the Joe Rogan where you're knocking the machine down because you're going so freaking fast, <laughs> um, then you're getting. I mean, you, I'm not saying that you. There's not the right way to use a gym, and there is a right way to use right. a gym, whether it is with a trainer or not. But every, anyways, let's let me continue that path, and I'll do that again. Uh, machines. I forgot what video was I watching. The guy was going, "You're not. If you work on machines, you're not lifting. The machines lifting for you." Right. Which I think is true. The hardest part is maintaining your core, stabilizing everything, and lifting. So uh, machines, any gym that, that the bulk of my gym is 70% machines, which leaves me no room to do lunges or anything else because there's so many dang machines there. Mm -hmm. So I disagree with machines. Machines make you stronger than you really are, blah, 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 etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so the only really real feasible space in a gym is either the stretch area which nobody uses for stretching. They all use it for horrible core exercises. Mm -hmm. Or a sort of lungy area that maybe they have a little bit of a strip that people use. Those are really, so to be honest with you, the, 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 that little strip area in the gym, and you know what I'm talking about, the little long yeah, strip. Yeah, in your, in your gym, yeah. Yeah, that's the area where people do the best workouts. Even though they might be doing them wrong, at least they're doing their own, whether it's a class they took or a video. You know, I see them... Basically, they're using space. You're renting space. You know right. Uh, uh, free weights are actually kind of good, but you know, now that I, now that I move with a free weight, and I'm actually thinking about jujitsu, and I'm thinking about how the body moves, and when it when it's doing any athlete, just the handle, the way a dumbbell works is very odd, and and to me, I don't even think it's functional. You know, I mean, you can make it functional and all that, but. I don't really like the way it works. That's why I think kettlebells are a little bit better option because it becomes an extension of your hand done in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, but but dumbbells themselves are kind of odd. Anyways, um, you know most of the so again the bulk of the gyms are are are, are meant to kind of keep you going to the gym. You know some of them have bigger bells and whistles like oh I want to do this, but the goal of you in a gym should be for sure you should be there in the winter because you need to place with cover because the winter elements suck. But to be honest with you, when the weather gets so bad, nobody goes anyways. Right. So <laughs> people, I think society at large and, and media have has gotten it down to a science where gyms are necessary for you to feel like you're doing something, but you're not. Because we know nutrition-wise, nutritionally, you can do the best the stuff there. Eat, eating better, eating better is better than eating shitty and working out a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm going to go there because I think at least at least when somebody gets you as a client, as a trainer, and I get somebody who I eat healthy, usually I get people that are, you know, they eat healthy, they do a little bit of yoga, they don't really like a gym, but I have, I have less to work with them than people are like, I go to the gym all the time, bro, dude, I do all this stuff. You know, I, but I, you know, yeah, okay, I eat pizza, I, you know, I drink a lot of beer. To be honest with you, those are the people that I have the most work to do, you know? Right. You, they're usually the most jacked up because whether it's the organs sharing space with the nerves and the muscles and all that, it's a very interesting thing. I've always, I've always been very suspicious of gyms. And yes, do I, do I work for one? Yes. Do I do my best to teach people um, how to treat their bodies? Every single client, I go pick a sport to do outside. Because as spring comes, you're going outside, you know? Yeah. Well, I think that I want to revisit one thing. Yeah, is yeah. that I think that equipment, whether it's a dumbbell, a machine like a treadmill or an elliptical, they kind of, they, and this is the point I think I, we're both making here, is that they serve a purpose. Like a treadmill was designed for a reason. Like it's a, it's a, I'm sure it's it's has great use as a as a physical therapy aid. It's great to uh, get um, a running like movement in when you're not able to do it outside, and a host of other purposes. But let's think a second about something like a, a dumbbell or a, a leg press machine that they have specific uses for certain populations, people, athletes, whatever you know, people in rehab, and. They're all put in this gym, and the gym's sort of telling you, like, use these. It's like, this is all good for you. These were all invented under the guise of health, and these will all help you get strong and in shape. And yeah. the thing is, is that they're not, they're not always... Gyms aren't designed 
with uh, a, like a purpose in mind. It's more of how general can we get. Um, a lot of them are kind of it's the the model is sort of tried and true of what equipment is probably the the most insurable, <laughs> which will cost you the least in injuries. There's a lot of that. But the point I'm trying to make there, and I hopefully not too cloudy, is that. I think the rise of yoga being so popular, of CrossFit being so popular, of martial arts coming back, in my opinion, to prominence, and running clubs being big, I think it's because it's it's a reaction to what people intrinsically want out of their getting healthy or their exertion experience. That most people don't use a gym for the reasons that you go join a run club or you go to CrossFit, for example. Like, the people who are in CrossFit, what they want out of their getting healthy experience is maybe to relive some kind of glory day of, of, of competitive athletics, because they, they did that. Uh, they like the community. Uh, it's, it's, it's challenging in a really difficult way. That There you go, three things right there that this like person A wants out of their physical fitness experience CrossFit is perfect for you you know there's someone who likes to run and be outside doesn't want to do it alone they don't want to go to a gym and run on a treadmill but they go and join one of those like Nike run clubs or something and they meet lots of friends like they want that there's always a social aspect to it too I mean we can talk about that some other time but it's you're using these things for what your it's kind of like your body or your brain like subconsciously kind of pushing you towards what you want out of your your health experience you know yeah or or your ability to exert itself and gyms are very vanilla but that is also their strength is that I will use myself as an example is that I now have something different to train and condition myself for with jujitsu and a gym particularly one that's stocked with decent equipment uh, between kettlebells, barbells, bands, all that stuff is a good tool for me because I can use my brain, pick Freud's brain, pick other trainer friends' brains. What exercise helps this muscle? What What do you What would you say about this compound movement? What do you think of this? This the, the gym provides all that and lets me. It's like a blank canvas for me. So yeah. if you bring that creativity to it or that conditioning to it, and honestly, with gyms, I mean, I can't slam them entirely. I mean, it's the and I'm not slamming them here. I'm just kind of telling you to be more mindful with your experience. Slam is the wrong word. But yeah. I get a fraction of kind of what I get from jiu-jitsu with that. Like I go to a gym. I have my workout planned. I have a program planned. I do it. I leave there. I feel good. I do feel a, a degree of that clarity mm. and, and accomplishment. The average person goes and thinks they're doing what you're doing, but they're not. Right. Right. So that's where the deception of the gym comes into play. Hey, man, I did 20, you know, the 20 minutes. I did 20 minutes on the machines, 10 minutes more, and then I stretched like a half I stretched a little bit, and then I bounced. I got my hour in it. I got my hour in at the gym, bro. Right. <laughs> I mean, I can't lie. Sometimes that happens to me. Like this morning, for instance, you know, I I had a really tough workout yesterday, a really tough deadlifting day, and I was tired today. Even though I got enough sleep, I woke up. That that six fifteen alarm hit, and I was like, "Oh man!" Like I yeah. I slept enough. I treated myself well yesterday. I ate right, and you know that recovery is tough. But I have to go bench press right now. <laughs> you know, I have to get out of bed, warm up, and go bench press. And it was really tough. I got there, and I had this whole workout planned, and I was really and I'm halfway through the bench press sets. And I was thinking to myself, I'm, I'm going to be lucky to just finish this exercise. And sure enough, I was right. I finished that exercise, just the bench you press going. In? What's that? Did you do any workings? No. Well, when I got home, I did. I have what I'm set, well, the, what I was getting at. Maybe this is my long-winded way. See, this is why I need you around more because you just cliff note me. You're like, ah, yeah, enough, enough to solve. I'll just, no, I was just like, do a zone, a zone four and then do your bench press. Good well, to that go. would have been smart. What I did was... <laughs> finished the bench press, I hit the numbers I needed to hit, which was good, but I had no fuel left for the rest of the workout, and that disappointed me. And, you know, initially I tried to stick around. I was like, nope, I'm going to go home. I came home, did some breathing exercises. I I did some, like, myofascial release with the lacrosse ball and just kind of breathed, ate a good meal, yeah. felt better. That's what I needed. But, you know, I was really disappointed in that moment. Like, oh, man. Like, it was almost like I just wanted to do it to do it, you know? But 
I wasn't, I was sort of ignoring for a little while what my body really needed. My body needed to do, really what it needed to do was a work in, <laughs> a Paul yeah. check zone four, but more or less that's what I did. I, it, I stubbornly fell into that. And yeah. then, and then I, you know, then about lunchtime today, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of fixing my lunch and I think to myself, I was like, yeah, that's, that's what I needed. I mean, I, there's no way around it. I was res I, I was responding to my body, but begrudgingly. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is like, like I talk about this stuff all the time, and I still struggle with it. So it's not like we're some gurus yeah, with all the you're answers. Aware, you're aware, like your priorities were hit, was hitting those numbers. Right. But the uh, but the shift. But now you know. Now you know the shift is I need to do a zone before and then hit the numbers. Right. There's if I'm caring about the numbers, I'm not going to hit the numbers in the right frame of mind if I don't do the zone. Right. I can struggle through it and punch it and then do the zone, but that's just a learning process, though, you know? I don't even mm -hmm. think the average person does gets even anywhere near that. Yeah. And, you know, I think, yeah. and like you said, like the average per like we've, we've talked about, the average person, not that it's bad, the average person has only so much time to give to their body, right, to begin with, you know, three days a week, three days a week. I wonder if they ever do a study on the average. How many times the average person goes to the gym? I don't know. I mean, of gym going populations or the whole United States themselves? U.S. gym going population. Mm, I don't know. Because I wonder how many people use their membership. That's a good question. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. Quite well, I know some gym models work on people just not using their membership. Yeah, they. Yeah. If you get those people in a moment of truth, a lot of the. Uh, the upper management of gyms, they'll tell you. They're very honest about that. <laughs> I read some crazy, or maybe it was on Reddit, or some kind of statistic about a guy who managed a big gym and how they basically banked on, you know, the, a large amount of people not showing up. Like, that, they made a significant amount of money. Well, I think it works in New York because of the seasons. Nobody shows up when it's too nice. When it's too nice outside, nobody shows up. When it's too dirty outside, nobody shows up. So this is yeah. Well, spot. you know, this is probably a discussion for another day in some ways. Yeah. But I think there is something about New York that's kind of unique in that you know, yeah, it's a nice day. No one wants to be inside. They're gonna run if they need to, or they'll be out walking around shopping, walking around the park, going to do something. Um, I mean, I think that happens a lot of places, but. Yeah, there's a, there's some kind of interesting aspects of the culture here that, um, you know, there's some there's so many uh, what would you call them uh, high profile trainers and like fitness celebrities of sorts that are all based in New York, which always strikes me as so strange because uh, I sort of think it's like it's kind of like you say like there's it's a fitness conscious area but not fitness conscious in the way like a San Diego is you know and you know San Diego has a lot of trainers and, and really but awesome health very indoor conscientious right it's indoor conscientious I don't know it's it must be because bro broadcasting is is you know it's the capital of it here that uh, people who are uh, trying to make their image uh, Known or their product known, they'll kind of naturally migrate here, no matter what. Yeah. You're, no matter what you're peddling, maybe that's it. I don't know, but yeah, I find it a little strange that there's people I respect and there's people, um, there's people that that uh, you know I have no nothing against, but they're they're big and they're from here or they they practice here, they you know they do their training facilities are here, you know. Yeah. It's different. It's different. It's strange. It's uh. I don't know. It's it's sort of counterintuitive, considering you know this is Freud and I telling you on the ground level, like gyms are crowded, but not really, not the way you would think New York would be when you see the amount of trainers that say they're based out of New York City, and you know. This yeah, is, I agree. This is, our, this is our book. This is our product. You know, whatever. You know, I mean, I'm just being honest to, about that. It's a weird. It's a. It's the best environment for trainers. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it's in, in LA. It's everybody's fit, so anybody can be a trainer. But it doesn't matter. They need to have the skill sets, you know, to be a better trainer. So 
Yeah, ultimately, your your skill and your care and and knowledge of your craft will ult- ultimately kind of shine through because you'll get you'll get the benefit of the doubt initially if you look like a trainer, you know, like kind of like I was talking about last week with the with the uh, the guy at my gym, the older guy that was kind of given out, or the other guy that was given out unwanted advice, you know, um, and. I completely lost my train of thought on that, but I think I finished <laughs> what I was trying to say. You finished, Kenneth. No, you were, you were making, making a point about that one guy commenting on the other guy and not being able to tell you what to do, but he looked Well, like- there was that guy uh, that was commenting on on how... Uh, not to do the technique. The certain yeah, way. not to do the technique that the other guy that I, I trained with sometimes was telling me to give a shot at. He's like, well, that's not how you should do it. If you're trying to work your chest, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess you're right," but that's not what I was trying to do. You're very presumptuous, you know. There's but a... that, that that type of um, yeah, I don't even remember how I was going to relate that. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's a new trainer we got, and he's talking about some crazy technique where you, all you do is squat for eight weeks. Is it um? Some technique, some Russian guy. Yeah, 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 it's a Russian thing. Uh, Smolov, yeah. I think. Yeah, dude, I was like, what? He was telling me sometimes it's back-to-back days, and sometimes it's all you do. You don't do anything else but squat. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's a. Uh, you should read up on it. It's an interesting theory. I think it kind of comes from that iron or curtain, that like Soviet block mentality of powerlifting. Yeah. Uh, kind of yeah. how you get up. I was like, that's. I would do it with deadlifting, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it with back squats. Yeah. Most people aren't ready. Uh, most people who want to back squat all the time are definitely not ready to back squat. They have too much yeah. to figure out, you know. There's another technique he was talking about: fat training, PHAT. So, two days of power training, like heavy, 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 mm-hmm. back to back. Then you take a day off, and then do three days of hypertrophy. Interesting. Push, pull, push, push, pull, pull. Then you switch it. What you you... What's that? It's a uh, so push, pull, push, and then you switch it the next week. So two days of uh, mad power training, so like for strength, and then day off, and then push, pull, push, hypertrophy days. Right. No, no, I heard that part. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Pretty interesting. He always he, he has all these power building techniques, and I'm like, ah, oh, it sounds kind of cool. For yeah, fat. it is. Yeah. I mean, I kind of am more in the diff- – the, the science, you know, obviously I can – only go on what I kind of believe is true because there's kind of two diverting theories on developing power and I tend to lean a little bit more towards the DeFranco one and that he talks about sometimes, I mean I don't know if his stance has changed, but he doesn't do many Olympic lifts in his gym because you have to perform them so perfectly to get the benefit of power in your um, in, in your you know, training. In other words, if you're trying to train power, he's found that there's a lot more efficient ways to do it, like med ball throws and hill sprints and all these like functional, practical applications of power uh, tend to develop power more uh, exponentially than an Olympic lift would on an average person. Like if obviously, if everyone had the uh, physical capability and capacity to do an Olympic lift perfectly, yeah, it's. I'm sure there's some instances in which the Olympic lift outweighs the the uh, like hill sprint for instance but for yeah. most people probably probably not really and someone like DeFranco who's dealing with guys who have to really put their bodies uh, on the line I'm gonna go with that you know yeah. in a functional way I'm gonna go with that yeah, and, and, that's no, and that's no disrespect to the Olympic lifting community because I actually like those. They're a lot of fun, especially if you go to a CrossFit gym. They're a lot of fun to do. But I think if you're practically trying to develop power, you know, because you're a lineman or you're, um, you're I like it. it contributes to general strength. I like it. Um, yeah, yeah. And it also, sh- it's a pretty good, uh, if you know them um, and technique wise, it's a pretty good, um, Physical assessment. Like you, you can't do half of those things if your body's jacked up somewhere. Right. Yeah. They they reveal things to you. Oh, that would be like totally because your whole neural network's involved, and you're like, well, yeah, you're all jacked up. You can't. Well, I mean, you, you squat. 
Right. I mean, I can also determine that if I ask you to do a deadlift, ask you to do a pull-up or a push-up. There's a lot I can tell you. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, but even for us, like, say we thought we were good, it would still reveal on a deeper link, all, um, on a deeper way, all of our weaknesses, even though we think we're in shape or healthy, you know? Right. Um, there's always different levels to look into. But, yeah, you're right. Every every session is, I'm looking to see, whoa, what needs to be fixed. Every session is an assessment. Yeah, um, that's what these are. That's, that's all this stuff is. Speaking of weird exercises, have you ever seen the Zercher squat? No. Uh, is that the one where you... You hold the barbell like on your elbows in front. It's like a weird variation of a front squat. Here, let me uh, uh -huh. let me screen share you here. See if I can show you. Uh, for those looking on, or for those listening on the podcast, just just Google image search search or squat. So search your curls. I've just seen those. No, but like this is like what they're doing basically. Like that's the motion. If you're looking, it's in, on your, it's in like your biceps. Yeah, like you're holding it in your biceps and you're basically just doing a squat. It's like a front squat, but you're not it doesn't require the shoulder, wrist, tricep uh flexibility. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Some people go really heavy with them. That guy's going heavy. Yeah. Like there's guys at my gym who do them sometimes, you know, cuz there was a lot of power lifters at my gym and uh hmm, I'll have to check that out. I'm going to try it with some dumbbells tomorrow. Yeah, I uh I um, I've been meaning to try it. Uh, just with like a bar with you know nothing on it like this guy here. Richard Squat, it's crazy. Yeah, I read about him in um, what's his name, Jim Wendler's book a while ago, and I had been meaning to talk to you about it, but uh. Yeah, I want to check it out. I kept forgetting. Yeah, it's it's a much it seems like a much more if you can handle the weight and it doesn't hurt your elbows or anything, it's a uh, it seems like a much um, healthier way to really like sort of load a squat. Hmm. I have to check, out, check the yeah. theory on it because it sounds very interesting, especially the core, what it does to the core. Yeah, so it's interesting. So, but uh, regardless, I think we're kind of hitting a. Yeah, we hit a good. A, we hit a good hitting, topic. We hit a good project. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I um. Mindfulness. <laughs> yeah, I mean that seems to be the theme of our show. <laughs> it's uh, but it's true. We can keep hammering at home, but there's a million different ways to approach it, and there's a million different ways, and and that I always discover every day that mindfulness gets into your life or can better your life in ways that like you wouldn't expect. So that and and, and if you're in mind autopilot during your workout, you're not challenging yourself. Right. That's I mean, true. I think you know what I'm talking about. Not like. If you're on autopilot and you know what you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you're not challenging yourself, you know. And I would even say, look, if it's about time, you could just kick, do a bust-ass workout in 30 minutes and not have to be on autopilot for an hour, you know. Yeah. I mean, whatever way you need to trick yourself, you know. Even if it's a get a personal trainer once a month, tell him, hey, I just want to see if what I'm doing is bullshit. Give me a give me a good workout for an hour after you do your assessment and everything else. You know, right. pay for it one time to see. And it's I'm not trying. It doesn't have to be me with me or Mark. It's just. Pay for a good trainer to see the difference between what you're doing versus what they're doing and what they're thinking. So, Right. Most, Check it out, Americans. Most definitely. So I appreciate you all listening. Freud does as well, I know. Uh, if you want to get at us, you can do so at Fun Meatheads on Twitter, which we post links on frequently of things we're kind of reading or thinking about. Uh, you can also listen to us on iTunes or Stitcher. Just search Functional Meatheads. You will find us. And go to functionalmeatheads.com as always. You can watch the YouTube videos of Fry and I sitting in front of a desk and talking to a screen. And from my couch, fool. <laughs> from, your, from his couch, from my horribly uncomfortable and broken chair. But that's, that's, what I, that's, the, uh, that's the sacrifice I, I, I give for you people. But... Uh, yeah, I think that's it. You got money now. What's that? You got money to buy a chair now. Go to Ikea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really do. You know, oh, dust chairs are... If you are... as jiu-jitsu guy, you should just be in a squat for the whole hour. Yeah. <laughs> be in some real zen state. But anyway, people, uh, it is time for the woo-off, and we will talk to you next week. And uh, what what are we supposed to do, Froy? That's the regular show. Woo! <laughs> and 
Good night, everybody.